ionization energy, you guys know what atoms are, right? They are uh, particles that have the same amount of protons as electrons. And you know what ions are, right? They're particles that have an unequal amount of protons and electrons, okay? What we're going to talk about now is how much energy does it take to turn an atom into a ion, okay? It's called the ionization energy, okay? And it's basically how much energy it takes to reach in and pluck an electron from an atom. How much energy does it take to turn an, an atom into a, a cation, okay? You do that by taking out an electron, okay? Now, the electron doesn't necessarily want to be taken off of the atom, okay? The electron is attracted to the protons, the nucleus. So it takes effort, it takes energy to take that electron out of that orbital, okay? Now, because atoms have more than, most atoms have more than one electron, there's more than one ionization energy, meaning there's a different amount of energy it takes to pull the first electron out of the atom uh, than for the second electron, then from the third and then the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. If you're going to take AP chemistry next year, we go into the differences between the first ionization energy, the second, the third, fourth, fifth, et cetera. I think it's an immensely fascinating topic. But if, uh, at this level, we're just going to stick to the first ionization energy. Okay? Let's just describe the trend. Okay? Like electronegativity, ionization energy decreases as you go down a group. Okay? Also, like electronegativity, it's the same reason, okay? Shielding, okay? Let's, if we consider, I can draw, let's do, let's consider um, hydrogen with one electron and consider um, something really big like cesium, okay? with one electron out here and then a whole bunch of electrons that are in the middle, okay? It's a lot easier to pull this electron and take it off because there's so many other electrons that shield that electron from the protons, okay? Cesium doesn't care if it loses its electron because it's got so many other electrons to take that space, okay? That's why ionization energy decreases as you get bigger, okay? Going across a period, like electronegativity, ionization energy increases. And I'll give you a hint as to why it increases. It's the same reason why electronegativity increases and why atomic radius decreases. What do you think that reason might be? That's got it. The number of protons increases as you go across a period. The, the way we describe it is the nuclear charge increases. You've got more protons, therefore you've got a, a bigger um, positive charge. Okay? So we're talking about how much energy it takes to pull an electron from protons, okay? Now, here's a little graph of um, the different ionization energies. Jaron, what, what element has the highest ionization energy? Helium does, okay? What group does helium belong to, Sean? It is a noble gas. So, you'll notice, for ionization energy, we're we do include the noble gases, unlike electricity. Uh, electronegativity, you can see all of our noble gases right here, okay? And they tend to have the highest ionization energy. Why? Because they're the most stable. They've got a full octet. They're completely happy with all of their electrons, okay? These guys over on the left-hand side, or your right, no, your left, okay? These guys have very low electron. They've only got one electron to lose. Okay? All right, let's see if y'all have been listening to me. What element's going to have the greater 
first ionization energy, potassium or sulfur? Ten seconds. Five, three, two, one. Okay. Sulfur is farther over to the right. Sulfur has more protons. Sulfur has the higher ionization energy. Okay. Looks like most of you believe me what I'm, what I'm saying. What about lithium and francium? Which one is large? No, which one has the greater first ionization? Oh, sorry. Francium is on the bottom left. Okay, five seconds. Okay. Lithium is smaller. Lithium has electrons more uh, closer to the uh, protons. Lithium is going to take more effort to turn it into a cation. All right. Let's see Mr. Smiley. Yeah. He's happy. This one's up in the ante here. Which one of these is going to have the greatest first ionization. Five seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, well, rubidium and calcium are on the left hand side, not very high ionization energy. Phosphorus is over on the right hand side. Neon, though, is a noble gas. And neon really like it, likes its electrons. Neon has the highest ionization energy. And most of you agree. Okay. Now, um, the activity that I have you doing mentions something about the second ionization energy. Okay? Now, if, this is the last point I want to make here. If you look at this graph here, you see that the ionization energies of the noble gases are relatively high. And the ionization energies of the alkali metals are relatively low, okay? Now, I mentioned that you can pull more than one electron off, okay? So, if you consider something like potassium, okay, the, elect the electron configuration of potassium looks like this, okay? You pull this electron off, guess what? the electron configuration turns into argon, okay? Now, what's the ionization energy of argon? Is it higher or lower relative to the, the original one? It's a lot higher, okay? So the alkali metals have a really low first ionization energy, and then to pull off that next electron is really hard, okay? So low first ionization energy, high second ionization energy. Um, Riley picked up on the uh, AP level question there. Riley says, well, what about beryllium? Oh, whoops. Which one? And then boron? 
Why is boron lower than beryllium? Why does it take more energy to pull an electron off of beryllium than it does for boron if I said that ionization energy increases? The answer is that beryllium, you're pulling it out of a 2s orbital, right? That electron's coming from a 2s orbital. Where boron, that electron's coming from a 2p orbital. If you draw out these orbitals in space, P for peanut, okay? The p orbital is farther away from the nucleus than the s orbital. So it takes less energy to pull the electron out of the p orbital than the s orbital. Uh, which one? Then, okay, well now we're starting to get into differences in d orbitals, um, which I don't really want to go into because it's going to confuse people. But you can see that, yeah, it's not always straightforward. Nitrogen is higher than oxygen, okay? And, well, I could go into that, but I just bore you, okay? So I'm going to stop there. Any other questions besides Riley's insanely complicated ones?